Uh, Emilio Cano will talk about the Puerto Poniente conversion in Mexico City. It's the largest Mexi it's the largest dump in Mexico City, and it's being transformed into a biogas project with EU investment, private investment, as well as carbon credits that are really coming out of the EU, as well as World Bank, uh, World Bank guarantees. So a very interesting international policy framework there with the underlying question of great for carbon, uh, carbon emission reduction, but what about the people involved? So we've got this, who's talking to whom at what level, right? And what about, is there another level here that's being somewhat excluded? Here is a project uh, that I think captures what we've been talking about. I think, I would, at least I want to make that correlation of what's going on in Europe, what's going on in the Americas, Right, financial, you know, what's the driver of this project? And guess what the driver of this project is? We've been talking about transnational networks, we've been talking about local, and because what's the driver of this project? To my sense, and what I know about being hired by the consortium that's going on, is pure profit. Okay. Pure profit that takes advantage of probably you know, a policy failure, policy failure of Mexico City, you know, closing its landfill because of that uh, court order between the f and, and a conflict between the federal government and Mexico City. Well, that's what creates this possibility. You want to put like that. A possibility in, 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 in many ways, but you know, um, I think that the driver for this project is profit. Anyway, European Capital Flow to Sustainable Energy Projects in the Americas, Bordo Poniente, Landfill Gas to Energy. That is the term. Bordo Poniente is the largest landfill in Mexico City. There were four closed in Mexico City in the last five, four years. 12,600 tons daily for over 20 million people. Occupies an area of 1,000 acres. The argument for closing Bordo Poniente is over capacity. Over capacity of, which is questionable at this point. It was, it was, but that was the argument closed December 2011 after 20 years of life, represents about, and this is, I think, important to those who are, care about climate change, 26% of the gas greenhouse emissions of Mexico City, only one landfill. And we have 20 million people working a day in Mexico City, eight million stay at night, it's only, it's 25%, and we have four landfills, so it really impacts climate change. Right? Puerto Poniente will be transformed into waste or land or gas, you know, landfill gas to energy, right? because it's already closed. You know. And by the way, let me make a note. Mexico does not uh, permit incineration. That doesn't mean that there's no incineration going on, but it's not allowed and will not render a permit to any incineration. And I've, there have been so many attempts to uh, invest in incineration plants by Canadian and plasma plants, and the permits have not been rendered. That's something really, really strict, and I'm, I'm really impressed that there's, there hasn't been yeah. around it. Okay, this is the, the model, right? You have Bordo Poniente, in, in the, the left side of the country. It's emitting, you know, all these tons of methane gas are gonna be transformed into gas, into a fuel for, gener for electricity generation. And that electricity generation is gonna be sent to a substation, a substation you know, that's going to send it to the to lighting in Mexico City. It's going to send it to the to the subway system as well. So that's a that makes it itself that model makes this 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 project a public a private partnership and a PPS very attractive for the World Bank, very attractive for uh, international finance institutions, very attractive for all the networking that we talked about about climate change today. So this is what's cooking. An investment opportunity, in many ways. 25-year contract to a consortium by Mexican Spanish companies. That is the driver. I am a consortium that's going to sell energy to Mexico City at the highest rate I can, I can sell to, with a revision uh, uh, index to inflation and to all sorts of uh, currency changes. So that's, that's my driver. That's my candy. Power will invest 2.12 billion initially pesos, which is about 160 million, close to 200 million pesos dollars, to close the landfill, capture biogas, and build an energy plant. 
After 25 years, uh, it will be handed to Conagua, the federal government again. This, this investment will be handed to the federal government because it is located in Mexico City, but it's a federal government project. The plant will start opening in 2014, generating 60 megawatt hours, saving Mexico City 800 to, to 1 million pesos in energy investments and other sorts of energy investments. Guaranteed sales of electricity to Mexico City, metro services and city lightings. Initial cost, the 200 million initial investment, expected profit of 300 million over 20 years dollars. I'm talking, so that's a driver so far. Well, we were talking about the European companies, the markets that are having trouble getting growth. You know, if it's austerity or is it the growth that we want? You know, emerging economies like Mexico represent, represent growth for these, trans, these transnational financial institutions. Just to set an example, the country's rating right now, it's at the highest it has been in many, many years. Economic and political stability, comprehensive legal system, demographic bonus, incentives, profitability, rec recognition to invest in a project like this. We talked about it this morning. You know, they're recognized by many NGOs. Uh, C40, Mexico City is part of the C40. And uh, the World Bank wants to funnel funds to these type of initiatives, right? Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So it's growth, OK? Well, everything looks good. Everything's fantastic. Yeah, profit, right? OK. It really appeals to the European and Mexican transnational policy interests. OK. But, um, well, in addition to private investment, governments and banks, Spain, Germany are involved in Bordo Poniente. The governmental bank of Germany, the KFW, and its arm, DEG, are wanting to invest funds. I just, yesterday, um, Aitor was asking, what is the German, what are the, market, the assets of the German companies doing? Well, they're investing a lot in the Americas. Germany is a very active investor in the Americas, and particularly in these projects. Climate change, waste to energy, or, la or landfill gas energy meets Europeans' interest and Kyoto commitments. Estimates of 1.8 million reduction of carbon dioxide emissions, translating to 60 million carbon credits sold to you under the clean development mechanism, but I'm not so sure, probably the voluntary markets, which we also talked about. Voluntary markets in Europe, in the United States, Australia probably, it depending on, I mean, this is a, a venture, so you will sell these, these, these bonuses depending on the price and who's, who, who's the best, who's the best, who's the best bidder for, for your, for your certifi certification of emissions reduction. Here is an analysis at current prices under the voluntary market. If on the, the next nine years, the, the, the project will be able to sell 20 million, close to 22 million certificates of emission reductions, stand for meaning around $54 million, $55 million, so to speak, at the lowest price that, the, that, that, that these certificates have been. We've seen $18, $25, right? If you, if you can estimate that jump in the price, because this, I think we have hit the bottom, um, well, you can imagine how much money that the project will get from selling its, its certificate of emission reductions. OK, well, this is a challenge for yours truly here, because as I said, the, drivers, for the driver is being a policy failure and it's being a, a profit maximizer consortium. But then we have the social element, right? And for fellows who are educated in and, 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 and defend this concept, this notion of sustainable development, the economic, the environmental, and the social components as revenues for one project represents a challenge that I don't know how we're going to take. Because you have to sell this picture to the consortium and to the project if, it's want to be, if it wants to be successful. Well, what you were talking about right now, the social, the social element, could be a factor that can stop this project if it's not tackled correctly. The environmental element as well, can, 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 you can be closed by, by authorities if you don't perform environmentally. Right? The, economic, the economic project is already, the, the, and the case is already set. So, and probably these transnational movements, dynamics, and organizations 
did not affect this pro this problem this this project. But you know the the order of the elements will not change probably because we're on, we're on time to have input by experts in social arena, experts in the environmental arena. And of course the economic side is I think taken care of. But if this project is not carefully taken for, it will be a failure in many ways because catalores, pepenadores, waste pickers around the world, if they're changed or taken away their livelihood and their means of, 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 of uh, business, of, of life, they will close the project. They know how to organize. I mean, probably the picture is a beautiful picture when you, when you, when you see them at the level and you see the infrahuman situation that they are living in. But when they come to negotiate with the government and with the companies, there's a fellow that comes in a bulletproof Mercedes-Benz that's going to negotiate the project. There are layers of these folks working. And this is only one layer of them. So the risk, the risk associated to the project has to be somehow covered because the funds from New Europe, the funds from the investors, the, the, the funds, I mean, you don't want to lose them, especially in this, in this economic situation. So here comes the multilateral, multilateral bank, the World Bank, with, a, with OMIGA, the Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency, that can help investors and leaders deal with this risk by ensuring eligible projects against losses relating to currency inconvertibility and transfer restriction, expropriation, war, terrorism, and civil disturbance, which is very likely that that could happen if this project doesn't look into the social realm of it. Immediately, if, 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 if the pepenadores feel excluded from this, they're going to close this project. That is something that we have told them. So, breach of contract. What happens if Mexico City doesn't pay the, the, the energy? That's what they're banking on. That's where they're investing on. Is it common that a government does, in, in particular in Latin America, doesn't pay um, or doesn't render its commitments for whatever reason? Yes, it is. Non-honoring or certain financial, financial obligations. Okay. So you need to cover projects. You know, even the Mexico has high standing right now. It, has, it represents a lot of, 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 of risk. And so it does going down to Americas. Many projects in Argentina were expropriated. Bolivia expropriated also a plant from Spaniards. So funds need to be very, very, very secured in order to, have to make these things happen as well for the social arm. Linked environmental issues associated with Bordo Poniente, even before it closed, leaks from landfill polluted nearby Rio Chubusco. It's a huge mess. Since Bordo Poniente closed, no adequate alternative has been set up. It's a mess, now close to 15,000 tons a day that Mexico City generates have no legal uh, regulated place to go. So it's being a mess. Boarding states are receiving the waste. They don't want to, but they're Mexico City is paying um, $20 a ton. So somebody's making also another business out of this, this, this problem. An interim plan to take garbage to nearby plants fell apart immediately. Of course, now it's all illegal, probably. And we have a, an idea that some of this waste is going to cement plants near Mexico City, causing all these environmental effects and health effects to our population. Nearby lines which refuse to take trash from Mexico City. Well, if you, have a, if you pay them, they will, or they are doing so already. The unsolved social problem, and this is where we need to talk to the financials and investors and the government. Members of the informal recycling sector, known as pepenadores, were not included in the decision-making process of landfill closure. Pepenadores include 1,500 families whose livelihood relied on trash brought to Bordo Poniente. The ones, the same catadores, you know, living in Mexico, that Marta showed us. But this is not only the 1,500. This is the top, the bottom layer of the pepenadores because it starts when they pick up the garbage in Mexico City. That's the top layer. Well, the most one, the workers are the at the high levels, and then you have the ones that do negotiations with corporates and, and the business. Officials explicitly stated waste collectors will keep working in the landfill over the life of the new waste to energy plant or life or a landfill gas magic. So the project is inheriting the social 
situation, problem, or solution, if you want to call it. Who bears responsibility for social issues here with the, this project? Well, the families, the 1,500 families, BMX bears no responsibility for past pollution, but must provide jobs, schools, health care for those who depend on Bordo Poniente. So here we have a chance to collaborate with Libby. Composting plant, there's a composting plant that needs, that, that, that is that under contract is to go to the Penalores uh, for their life, for their means. Policy engagement, how much is planned by Mexican government? Role of EU policy participants, okay, so now the transnational uh, network should come along. Does the MIGA help to hurt, uh, or hurt on this front? Well, yeah. it protects, it protects the investment, but and the investors, right, from the civil action. Who is protecting the social part of it? International policy partnerships. What in the talk? Can we develop more sustainable energy projects in the region? Well, this is an experiment. So I think Matt said today they're experiments. Yes, they are experiments. So this is a climate change experiment that definitely for the health of, and it's the largest landfill gas project in the world. Don't get me wrong, but this is the largest landfill gas project that's going on in the world regarding climate change. We should all be, I think, interested, the ones that, are doing this, that this project is successful. Conclusion, closing Bordo Poniente is impacting enough to the environment and the Penalores. The economic and environmental benefits are not sound when placed in the Mexican leg le legislative context. By buying carbon credits, the U.S. is hindering Mexico in moving toward a clean and sustainable waste management aimed at waste reduction. So, but the question is, how do you make these sustain with these elements of risk, these elements, uh, of these drivers? How do you make this a sustainable project and an icon for climate change um, reduction or emissions reduction? Thank you very much. <laughs>